Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna give you an update on Murder, Mr. Hamilton, my time travel historical cozy for rapid release, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I construct characters out of historical personages. I'm Jane and this is Fiction Technician. When I first started vlogging about Murder, Mr. Hamilton, I introduced it with a video I called Can I Write and Publish a Novella in Six Weeks? Well, I know the answer to that now, and it's no, it's not going to happen. I have the first draft of the novella done. I am working through revisions, but it's taking a little time, and I'm still hoping to publish in July, but I am going to be a little late of my prospective deadline, which was going to be July 3rd. I really wanted to release it on that date because it deals with Alexander Hamilton, and the Alexander Hamilton musical is debuting on Disney Plus on July 3rd. So I thought perhaps some of the people who would be in interested in that musical would be interested in my book and it might be nice to catch that wave of enthusiasm. So how do I feel about this whole project now? Do I feel okay about the fact that I announced a prospective release date and then fell short of it? Well, short answer, yup. And longer answer, Oh my gosh, yes, because this project has meant so much to me. And if I hadn't really set up this rapid release system for myself, if I hadn't pushed myself for it, I know I would not be where I am with the book right now. Announcing a release date and then blowing it is not a habit I want to get into. But in this crazy time in quarantine, when I'm stuck here with my four kids, it is very valuable to me to have a reason to say, this thing of mine, this work of mine, is important and can rank among my priorities. So working on this novella has been such a lifeline to me and I'm so excited to get it done. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about how you build characters out of historical personages. I've done historical fiction before, but never really with characters based on real people. So. The first thing I want to make clear is that when you're writing a historical character, it is a character. You are doing research, yes, but you're also doing invention. You're kind of deciding which aspects of the character to play up and which to kind of allow to take a back seat. And basically, the amount of invention you can do is sort of in inverse proportion to what is known about that historical person. So you take a character like Alexander Hamilton, for example, and I don't have that much room to play. We know so much about him. We know the names and ages of his children. We know the state of his marriage, which was good. And because he left so many writings, we really know a lot about his internal character and the way he thought. Um, if you read the letters between Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton that were exchanged just before their fatal duel, well, it's it's almost funny because Aaron Burr's letters are like three or four clipped angry sentences and Alexander Hamilton's are pages of dripping contempt. So Alexander Hamilton was brilliant and he was mouthy and I really can't write him in a different way. But what I can do is kind of swing him in a particular direction and play up certain aspects of his character. And one of the things I'm really playing up in this book is his role as a father and his relationship to his children. Another character I'm basing on a real life historical person is Stephen Price. Stephen Price is a character who almost had to be in the book because this book is about a girl who travels back in time, gets stuck in the past, and falls in love with Philip Hamilton, the son of Alexander Hamilton, right before Philip is killed in a fatal duel. And much of the book so deals with the circumstances surrounding this duel. And Philip, um, sorry, Stephen, Stephen Price was a part of that. Both Stephen and Philip insulted George Eaker at the theater one evening, and that's what led to the duel. A couple of days later, Eaker faces Price. Shots are exchanged, but no one is hit, and the next day, Eaker faces Philip Hamilton and kills him. So Stephen Price had to be in the book. So I started by learning everything I could about Stephen Price, and the two events I really zeroed in on are this duel where he fights alongside his friend Philip, and another duel he fought later in life. Stephen had a younger brother, Benjamin, who was killed in a duel by a British army officer. 
and later he learns that another British officer considered himself instrumental in goading those two men into a duel. Stephen duels that army officer and kills him. So what I tried to do is sort of draw a through line through these events, something that could go to Stephen's character and explain why he would be involved in both of these events. And I could have made him a real hothead. But what I ultimately decided is that I was going to play up Stephen's loyalty. It takes loyalty to support your friend in a argument that isn't really your own, and it takes loyalty to defend your brother. So I didn't want Stephen to simply be a cipher, somebody who was hanging out on the edges of scenes. I wanted him to have a personality, and loyalty, extreme loyalty, is what I went with. I have one more character I want to talk about, but first I want to ask you to please smash that like button if you feel this video is interesting. And if you really like learning about how to write cozy mysteries, please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell icon for notifications because I have lots of great cozy mystery material coming up over the next month. So Alexander Hamilton is a character largely based on research. Stephen Price is sort of a combination of research and invention. And then we've got a character like Fanny Antill. So I was really excited when I found Fanny because I was specifically on the lookout for some female characters around Philip's age. I knew I wanted this book to be mostly about the love story between my protagonist Lucy and Philip, but I also wanted to set up some strong female bonds for her to have in book two, maybe some partners in crime who would help her investigate mysteries. And Fanny Antill is one of the ones I found. So you can see that I don't even have a picture of her. Very little is known about her. She was an orphan who lived with the Hamiltons from the time she was about two until she was 12, when she moved into her sister's household, her older sister. Um, and she was about three years younger than Philip. So I was basically free to do whatever I wanted with her. And I decided to focus on her relationship to Philip. And I figured there were about three options. She hates his guts. She considers him sort of an older brother or she has the hots for him. And three was definitely the most exciting to me because it allows her relationship with Lucy to begin in rivalry and then grow into companionship and friendship. Writing historical fiction is a delight for me and about real historical personages even more so because it helps me get closer to an understanding of our past and why people made the choices they did. If you would like to hear more about murder, Mr. Hamilton, or if you'd just like to learn a lot about writing cozy mysteries, please subscribe and ring the bell. Check out.